Oh, hello there. My name is Lance Erickson and uh, I welcome you to this program and, uh, and I just feel so welcomed by all of you into your houses and uh, your places of work and uh, on your phones. I feel welcome and I welcome you. And most of all, God welcomes us all because we are His beloved and He loves us so very, very much. And He is a Father and He loves all His children just the same. He's not a respecter of one against another. He, he shows no respect to titles, uh, to race. Uh, he loves us all the same uh, as a loving Heavenly Father that He is. And I am so thankful because I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the mercy, the grace of my Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful that He's in my life and I know you are too. And I know there are those of you there that are really struggling and really finding it hard to even uh, get through the day. It's, it's, it's almost like I'm feeling like a, it's like a heaviness over you. And uh, it's, it's, it's hard to explain, but it's not a natural heaviness. It's a, it's a spiritual heaviness. Some of you are actually feeling what is actual warfare against your spirit. It feels physical and sometimes it's even hard to breathe. But uh, that's a spiritual thing that's actually happening with you. And uh, the Lord really wants you to take authority over that. And uh, I experience this when I go through warfare as well. And uh, those of you that are intercessors, you experience this. But then you also, when you pray through in tongues, you experience the breakthrough that comes. Hallelujah. And that note of victory and that note of joy and that overcoming joy comes forth to know that you pray through. But some of you uh, don't know that that's what it is, that it actually is a, uh, either a burden of intercession uh, to pray. It could be for someone in your family. It could be for you, a situation you're going to go through up ahead or, or a situation you're going through or dealing with a situation that's behind you. Or it could be for a workmate or, a, or it could be warfare against you from the enemy. The uh, a device that says, be aware of the enemy's devices and attacks that can come against your mind, uh, can come against your spirit, can come against your body in the area of, of sickness. We're to be aware of these things. Um, now, I could pray for you and that would be great and, and uh, break uh, some of that off you, but, but uh, it's mostly to do with prayer. This is mostly to do with prayer and this is uh, what I'm speaking on here, talking about putting on uh, the full armour of God. Now, I can liken myself to a lot of those things because sometimes I'm laying down on my bed and I'm praying for two or three, four hours in tongues and it is so, oh, it's so heavy. It's so difficult but I just keep praying and keep praying and keep praying until the, light, the, the load lightens. Sometimes it seems as if the load doesn't light, lighten straight away and later on in the day as I'm praying, uh, then, the, then that load will lighten. We need to understand that sometimes that is a weapon against us, but also it is an intercession for others, as I was just saying. But mostly I experience uh, weapons that are sent against me and I understand that and I take authority over those things and I speak those uh, scriptures uh, that are applicable to what is coming against me or, or the Holy Spirit through word of knowledge reveals to me what is coming against me and the source of it or through the discerning of spirits, I'll discern what spirit is coming against me and I'll discern the manner and I'll discern what the purpose is and that spirit coming against me so that I can see and know and understand the warfare that is against me and properly shut it down in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord's wanting to teach and train some of you that are not used to that to come into an area of prayer or warfare uh, that you can come into and it's going to cause you to be able to overcome more in your job or overcome more in your ministry and the Lord's wanting to take you more into that area of prayer. Uh, some of you evangelists, he's wanting, um, uh, you get real strong burdens for the lost. 
uh, but uh, you struggle and uh, sometimes the doors don't open like they should. And the Holy Spirit's wanting to show you how to get victory in those areas against the warfare against you. A lot of the warfare against you evangelists is to uh, stop you from going forth and preaching the gospel, to shut doors so that you can't get out and preach the gospel, uh, the light of the gospel to the lost. And so the Lord's really wanting to teach you to pray and to warfare and to understand how to do that and how to use the weapons for your warfare and you can have victory. Others of you already understand that, but you don't always understand why these things come upon you. And sometimes you need to say, Holy Spirit, what is this specifically for? So you're not beating at the air, but you're hitting the target. Exactly what is that that I'm praying for, Lord, right now? And the Holy Spirit might not reveal it to you straight off, but during the day, He might give you ideas or scriptures that will bring understanding to, to what that, that you are praying for. We need to understand this. We need to know how to pray. And there's all kinds of prayers and entreaty, as the scripture says. There's the, the prayer of agreement. There's the prayer in tongues, of course, and the singing in tongues, of course. And, but there's also um, the request prayers. There's also the prayers of intercession. There's also the prayers where you continually pray the same thing until the answer comes through, like the widow that would not let go of the judge until he blessed her. The prayer of perseverance, that's what that is. There's many different kinds of prayers. There's the prayer of praying, just praying the Word of God and strengthening yourself and building yourself up and praying the Word of God over others. that They might not know you're praying for them, but you're speaking the Word of God over them in intercession that way and you're building their spirit man up. There's all kinds of prayers and we need to understand how to pray all these prayers. It says in Ephesians, we go back Ephesians 1.16. Uh, where are we? Are we? Okay. Um, uh, Paul, Paul was praying and, oh no, that's not the scripture I'm after. Uh, it's further on in chapter 6, where in verse 18, where it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So there's all different sorts of prayers that we need to understand. And then we need to understand how to position ourselves and I, you know, I always put on the full armour of light and, you know, Father, I, I put on the helmet of salvation. I have the mind of Christ. I hold the thoughts, the feelings and the purposes of His heart. And then I put on the breastplate of righteousness. I have right standing with you, Father, through the blood of Jesus Christ. So that's in place, that uh, armour plate of light is in place there to protect that part of my spirit, man. And then I put on the belt of truth. So, and I say, I speak your truth and love, as it says in Ephesians 4, speak your truth and love with my neighbours. And then that's the belt of truth, that we must always speak the truth, but we must always speak it in love. And then I put on the preparation of the gospel shoes of peace. And uh, so that I'm ever ready to give an answer when I am asked. So we're all ready to give an answer in the gospel for when we're asked by those who do not know Jesus Christ. And then I take up the shield of faith and I say, thank you, Lord, that shield of faith is on me now. And right now it extinguishes every fiery dart of the wicked one sin against me now in Jesus' name. So then that's taken care of. And then I take up the sword of the Spirit, of course, which is the Word of God, the rhema of the Word, the spoken Word. And I say, thank you, Lord, that Word of God, it, it divides, as it says in Hebrews 4, verse 12. It divides between spirit, soul, body, and the joints and the marrow, and the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Thank you, Lord, I have on the full armour of light. And I usually do that first thing in the morning and last thing at night. And, and my faith and belief is that that stays on me through the whole day, no matter what's thrown at me, it deals with those things. And even though something gets through, there's a chink in the armour and an arrow might get through sometimes because of areas of our life uh, that we haven't surrendered, we then take authority 
And I usually, I can sort of feel it in the spirit. You see, your spirit man feels things. A lot of times when I get the gift of the word of knowledge, I actually feel what the person is feeling. It feels physical, but it's not physical. It's actually your spirit man feels that. And sometimes I feel and I look down and there's an arrow and it's gotten through. And so I pull it out and, uh, and then, then I forgive whoever. If I have anything against anyone, Lord, show, but Lord, I forgive them as you've forgiven me, the Lord's prayer. And then I just ask the Lord to heal up and seal that area if there's any damage and any wound there. Uh, so this is how it operates. And the reason why I can feel a lot of time is because I spend a lot of time praying in tongues. Therefore, my spirit man is active and the area of feeling in my spirit, the spiritual sense of feeling is uh, pretty strong. And uh, so I know what's going on. I feel something coming up my back. I can, whoa, in Jesus' name. So we need to be aware of these things and uh, how the Lord can use us through our spiritual senses. And that's why I was saying in uh, the episode before or the one before that, about praying in tongues a lot, we need to be awake. We need to be alert. We need to stand on our guard against our adversary, the devil, who roams about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, who we steadfastly resist in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're talking about the armour of light. So we need to understand, we need to know, we need to discern. Another scripture that I, I pray often is uh, 1 John 2.20. It says, we have an, and there's different translations, we have an anointing from the Holy One and our spirit so that we know the truth. Another translation says we know all things. Another translation says we discern between truth and falsehood. So, and, and right now I'm concentrating about we discern between truth and falsehood. And we can discern when someone's teaching and preaching the Word of God, especially if we spend a lot of time praying in tongues. We can discern the truth in what they're saying, or we can also discern if there's error in what they're saying. So it's a good way to be able to discern when someone's preaching and teaching the Word of God to you, as well as it's a good way to be able to discern when people, you're fellowshipping with people, or you're talking about the Word of God, or as some do, argue. Uh, so you can discern what's actually happening there, that that could be a religious spirit using that per person to uh, perpetrate your armour and uh, to, to get a lie into your life. But that anointing within you will discern what they're saying, whether it's true or whether it's wrong, whether it lines up with the Word of God or whether it doesn't. Uh, just keeping it simple. So we thank God for that. And then uh, verse 27 of 1 John 2, 20 says, we need not that anyone should teach us. And that's not talking about fivefold, don't teach us. No, because this anointing within us is, is to do with everyday things. It's this anointing within us, the believer's anointing, is to dealing with the affairs, the everyday affairs of life. It's not so much to do with uh, uh, the preaching of the gospel, but it's to take care of our everyday affairs. And it says, we would be taught by this anointing and this anointing teaches us con and it says concerning all things, which I just said tonight, and uh, that we know that it's true and that it cannot lie. So whatever you sense or discern in your everyday life, whether that's buying property, whether that's to do with uh, uh, the, the landlord charging you too much rent, whether that's to do with other things, someone's trying to take advantage of you, you'll discern what's right and wrong in that situation and you'll be able to make the right choice. I think that's very important. So we're not just talking about the mantle upon to preach the gospel, but we talk about the anointing within or I call it the steering wheel. And if you want to discern whether the anointing upon is correct, you can discern it through the wheel, the anointing within the steering wheel, whether that the anointing upon is true or whether it's wrong. There was this young prophet, he was about 16 years old in Queensland. And uh, his, his father used to intercede for him for six hours a day. Woo. Uh, so he had a strong mantle at a young age. He was Sri Lankan, a young fella. And uh, when he'd get up, and he was a prophet, he'd get up, uh, he'd feel 
and he'd see this mantle come on him and he'd, he'd look at it come on him and you see that everything's in the right place. But you see, he was discerning from the anointing within and he was feeling it. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. And then he looked down, he sees something's a little bit out of place. And when he said that and he discerned that, boom, that mantle will leave. Of course, it was the wrong mantle. Isn't that interesting? But he discerned from the anointing within. We need to discern from the anointing. When you see signs and wonders, we need to discern from the believer's anointing, 1 John 2, 20 and 27, whether that is from God, whether that's true or whether that's false. And then another mantle would come down upon him. Oh, and that feels right. That feels right. He looked down. Oh, everything's correct. And that's the right mantle. And then you say, could you stand up, sir? You'd see the light of God on a person in here would prophesy, but it would be the correct mantle of God. So we need to use that anointing within, wheel within to steer the anointing upon. Hallelujah. So the Lord has provided, thoroughly furnished us for every good, good work. Isn't he wonderful? He's equipped us so that we can be successful in our lives and in, and in ministry as well. So, hallelujah, the, the scriptures goes on to say uh, that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. No, of course we do not. I um, can walk into a place and I can feel that things aren't right or I can discern that something's on a person or maybe they've been in a fight and, and I go, oh, there's, something, there's like an anger there and I can discern and pick that up in my inner anointing not from the mantle upon, but the inner anointing we live by every day. And I can discern and pick that up and then I can pray for them. They don't have to know, but under my breath, I can take authority over that anger that came upon them when they're in an argument with another person and I can break it off in Jesus' name and therefore serve my brother or sister and they, they don't even know about it. They don't need to know about it. Uh, we're to look after our brothers and sisters. We're to love one another, care for one another, pray for one another, forgive one another. So we can uh, all the time be watching out, watching out, being our brother's keeper, watching out over the souls, over the spirit man. And I can also come in and, uh, and I can feel something else is not right and I can bind it up ahead. If I feel something's going to come towards me up ahead, uh, I can bind that up and the Lord can show me even from the anointing within and I can shut it down and release God's plan and purpose um, in its place. So, and there's many other experiences I could give you of just my inner anointing, knowing things aren't correct and things aren't right, and then even praying into it and asking the Holy Spirit for more information. And sometimes even with the word of knowledge, I can ask the Lord for more information and he can say, oh, um, it's the left arm. It's not the right arm. Oh, it's a lady. It's not a man. Oh, um, it's on the left hand side of the congregation in that direction. As you ask the Holy Spirit, he'll give you more information uh, for the mantle of the word of knowledge that comes upon. So there's, there's ways, the ways of, the, of God and there's the things of the Holy Spirit we can understand and learn how to utilise. So we don't get too super spiritual thinking it's, oh, just a mantle comes and oh, that's it. No, no. Uh, there, there's a way that these things, there is like uh, mechanisms in the spirit. There's the mechanics of this, just like there's the mechanics in the car that cause that beautiful car. You just see the outside hull of it uh, the outside of the car, but you don't see the engine within. What is, so it is with everything in the spirit. There's machinations, there's machinations, there's, there's works in, that, that are operating and the Lord wants us to be able to understand those so that we can uh, draw on those giftings and those anointings and that inner anointing and so that we can help others that are around us. So we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, uh, but uh, in your area, whether it's there uh, in Chennai or in the USA or in the Philippines or in Pakistan, Lahore or wherever you are watching this from. So you can readily draw on the anointing within to operate the mantle and the gifts that come upon. Amen. And against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. 
So therefore take up the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand. And in the evil day, having done all to stand and stand therefore. But of course, that's not standing in the natural. That's standing in the spirit. And I've been teaching you how you can stand in the spirit. And having done all to stand, you can continue standing if you continue daily to meditate on the Word of God, daily to pray in the Spirit, daily to sing in the Spirit, daily to speak the Word of God, daily to thanksgiving, praise and worship, daily the different things of the Spirit. If we do them, if we work them, then we will stand and then we will stand again. But our stand is totally in the light of Christ. It's totally in the full armour of light. It's totally in the full armour of God so that we can overcome because the Bible says that we overcome because he overcame. And uh, once again, whoever there has never given your heart to Jesus, it says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you believe that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and declare and decree him your Lord and Saviour, you shall be saved for with your heart you believe to right standing of God and with your mouth you declare and you confess unto salvation whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. While he is near, call on him while he is near and he will save you to the uttermost, it says in the scriptures. And I'm just going to pray uh, see what the Lord's showing me here. There's this man there and it's like um, you feel like uh, someone's following you and you turn around and nobody's there. Uh, but I see the spirit it's following you from behind. It's been harassing you. And even at night it wakes you up and there's fear and there's panic. And I take authority over that spirit. I Break its power, command you to assist in your operations and cease in your manoeuvres against that man, against that believer. Right now in Jesus' name, you will no longer operate against him. Now, dear brother, you need to understand those things that I taught and implement them in your life. And then you will be able to fight the good fight and have victory when it comes to the spirit realm. Bless you guys. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being with me and bless you in the mighty name of Jesus.